Why clothespins? Clothespins are cheap, and you can make them any kind of shape you want. They won't mar your work, usually. Tip number one, a clothespin pin vise. A pin vise is a small vise for holding pins or other small, usually circular objects like drill bits, drivers, traditionally used by jewelers and model makers, anybody making really small parts. The closed pin is perfect for this because it's small. And as I did here, you can drill out the work holding area to the size that's needed. Here it is a computer case screw, which you'll see later. That little screw will not fit in the jaws of this closed pin. So I'm trimming them off, making it easier to use because closed pins are super cheap. So I'm gonna sand it down, make it a little bit nicer to work with. And here's that tiny little brass screw. I have another YouTube video on it somewhere. Go check it out. So this little screw here is going to be sanded and then buffed, but that would of course sand and buff my fingertips if I tried to awkwardly hold this little tiny screw. Tip number two, clamp a clamp. It's easy, as I said, you just uh, clamp a clamp. In this case, a jeweler's tweezers. This is a great idea for if you're soldering, you can hold all your little wires. Tip three, reshape the clothespin with a sander. Way quicker than cutting it and hand sanding it. And the results are honestly way nicer. Clothespins are usually made out of cheap wood, at least any that I've got laying around. Sanding up the jaws so they have a nice positive angle instead of a negative angle. This handsome fella here, difficult to hold with my awkward fingers. Just gotta clamp them here so I can do some painting. Tip four, modify the inside of the jaws. Similar to the pin vise, I'm going to modify the inside of the jaws. Closed pins are easily take apartable, disassemblable. Anyways, filing away a groove on the inside so I can hold a wire perpendicular to the jaws of the closed pin. No particular reason in this case, because this is just an example. Tip the next, a jeweler's ring clamp. Jeweler's ring clamp uh, usually doesn't have a spring, so this isn't a perfect example, but you drive a wedge into one end, either end, of the ring clamp, and it provides a very secure method of holding a ring or other piece of jewelry to work on. Tip number six, reverse the jaws. In this case, it works way better than the driving a wedge as the jeweler's ring clamp, except for the struggle, of course, of fiddling with the cheap spring and the cheap little clothespin. However, once you finally manage to get it assembled, it provides a very nice narrow clamp. And that's it. Thanks for watching.